Hi, welcome back to Physics Teacher. This is a problem that was on a previous Sir Isaac Newton contest, or SIN contest, which is a high school physics contest offered by the University of Waterloo. If you want to try the problem, take a minute, pause the video, and give it a shot. When you're ready to see the solution, hit play. All right, so let me give you a quick overview of the problem. Here we have a person which is just standing there stationary relative to the ground. Then we have a tank moving up the incline at a speed of 10 meters per second, and the incline is at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. Then the tank fires a projectile, in this case a watermelon, a 10 kilogram water watermelon with a muzzle velocity of 25 meters per second. 20 degrees relative to its horizontal. And the question is, when the watermelon lands, wherever it lands, how far away is it from the tank? So this is going to involve a couple things. First thing, we need to consider relative velocities. And the reason we have to consider relative velocities is if we want to analyze the projectile of that watermelon, the trajectory of that watermelon and where it lands, we need to know its speed relative to the ground. But it doesn't tell us the speed relative to the ground, it tells us the speed relative to the tank. So we're going to apply the chain rule here, where we're going to say the velocity of the watermelon relative to the ground is going to equal the velocity of the watermelon relative to the tank, plus the velocity of the tank relative to the ground. Okay, if you need a refresher on relative velocities, you can see my lesson for grade 12 physics. All right, so the velocity of the watermelon relative to the tank. That's right here, right? It's 20 degrees to the horizontal with an initial speed of 25 meters per second. Okay, and the velocity of the tank relative to the ground, that's right here. It's 10 meters per second moving at an angle of 45 to degrees to the horizontal. So so I want to add those two vectors. Now you can do it in components, or you can do a triangle and use sine and cosine law, whichever way you want to do. I'm going to use just the sine and cosine law here. So what we have here is the velocity of the watermelon relative to the tank. So that looks like this. I'm going to draw these vectors a little bit bigger here. So that is 20 degrees to that horizontal at a speed of 25 meters per second. And then we're going to add tip to tail, the velocity of the tank, which would look something like this, which is 10 meters per second. And we know that it is at an angle to this horizontal here of 45 degrees. Using our Z pattern, we also know that this is going to be 20 degrees right here. And the velocity of the watermelon relative to the ground is right here. So that looks nice to be able to use the cosine law, right? We have the length of this vector, the length of this vector, and the angle in between them. So you can use your cosine law. And if you do that, you'll get the magnitude of the velocity of the watermelon relative to the ground equal to 22.66 meters per second. And we also need to know the angle, so this angle here. And that's where you can apply your sine law. Okay? So in this case, if you do that, you will get this angle to be 23.57 degrees. If we add it to 20, then we get the velocity of the watermelon relative to the ground to be 22.66 meters per second and then 23 plus 20 is 43.66 degrees above the horizontal. So now that we know the velocity of the projectile, the next part of the question is going to be a projectile motion question. So for our projectile motion question, our initial velocity, let me just draw a projectile here. Our initial velocity is 22.66 meters per second. 
That's the velocity of the watermelon relative to the ground that we just calculated. So I can draw that here. So that's our initial velocity. And it is at an angle of 43.57 degrees. That was phi. Which was 43.57 degrees. Okay, and it's going to go somewhere. So what we're going to do now is try to figure out exactly how far it went. So let's draw another triangle here. Same angle, this will be 45 degrees. And this um, hypotenuse is our displacement. That's what we want to find, how far the watermelon actually went. This will be our displacement in Y, and this will be our displacement in X. So let's analyze the X components here. In projectile motion, we use components. So there's only one equation we can use in, in the x direction because there is no acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration is zero in x because we assume no air resistance in high school physics. <laughs> so we'll have one equation. Delta dx or displacement equals velocity times time. So let's split these up into components. Delta dx would be delta d times the cos of 45, right? If we split up this triangle here, remember this angle is 45, equals velocity in x. So now it will split up our initial velocity into its horizontal and vertical components, which would be the initial velocity times the cos of phi. And that we can calculate because we know vi and we know phi. And then what we can do is rearrange this equation to solve for time. So if we plug in what we know, we'll get delta d cos 45 divided by vi cos phi, which if you plug into your calculator is 16.41. All right, so that's as much as I can do with the x components. Let's try looking at our y components. So in our y component, we do have acceleration, the acceleration due to gravity. So I'm going to use this equation, delta dy equals viy delta t plus one half a delta t squared. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose down to be our positive direction. So gravity is going to have a positive value. However, our initial velocity, Vy, will have a negative value. All right, so let's write our components. So delta dy would then just be delta d times the sine of 45. And that's going to equal Viy, which is Vi, negative Vi, times the sine of phi. The negative is because it's up, and I've labeled down to be positive, plus, oh, no times delta t plus one half a, which is 9.8 meters per second squared times delta t squared. All right, so at this point, things are going to get a little messy because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to solve for displacement by substituting time right here in here. And so that's why it's going to get a little bit messy. So let's do that. All right, so we have delta d times the sine of 45, not substituting anything there yet. It's just this, equals minus um, vi sine of 43.5. We can plug that into our calculator. We get minus 15.61 all times by time, which is delta d right here, cos 45 over 16.41 plus one half of 9.8 is 4.9 and then again delta t squared so delta d running out of space <laughs> times the cos of 45 over 16.41 squared all right so let's simplify this a little bit here we will have a delta d in every term. This will be delta d squared. 
right, when we put that squared in. So we're still going to be left with 1 delta d. So what we have here is the sine of 45 equals, we have minus 15.61, and then we can multiply that by cos 45 divided by 16.41 gives us minus 0 0.951. Uh, times the cos of 45, right? I just divided these two numbers. And then over here, we have 4.9 divided by 16.41 squared. That squared has to go into everything in your brackets, which would be plus 0 0.0182 times delta D. We canceled one delta D, so we're left with one more, times the cos, running out of space here, cos squared of 40. 5. All right, so you just have one delta d there. So you can solve for that delta d, and when you do, you'll get 151.35 meters. But you're not done the question yet. What this means is that this is 151.35 meters. The question asks, for how far is the melon from the tank when it strikes the slope below? So yes, it traveled that far from the tank, but during the time it took to travel that distance, the tank has moved up the slope. So we need to figure out how far the tank has moved up the slope. And to do that, we're going to need to know how long that watermelon was airborne for. Now, since we've actually solved for delta D, we can go back here, plug it in and see that time is 6.52 seconds. So now that we know the time that it was airborne for, we also know the time that the tank has moved up the incline, and we know its speed. It's moving at a constant speed. So the displacement of the tank, let's call this delta D2, is just going to be velocity times time. And its velocity is 10 meters per second, and the time is 6.52 seconds which we just get as 65.2 meters. So if we want to figure out that total distance between the tank and the watermelon, we need to add these two delta D1 and delta D2s together. How far the watermelon traveled and how far the tank moved up the incline. When we add them together, we get approximately 217 meters or D2.